In this video, we're going to go over the reductive emanation of ketones, which can also work for aldehydes as well. So let's begin. In this process, we're going to convert a ketone into an amine. Now the first step is to add maybe ammonia or a primary amine or something. But let's use ammonia. Now this reaction will occur under mild acidic conditions. It works best at a pH of around 4 to 5. So once you add ammonia, it's going to turn into an imine. So the product will look like this. And it's reversible. Now you can reduce the imine with sodium cyanoborohydride. And this will turn into an amine. So that's an overview of reductive amination. You convert the ketone or aldehyde into an imine, and then you reduce it into an amine. Now, can we use other reducing agents like sodium borohydride, NaBH4, or even lithium aluminum hydride? What would you say? Well, it really depends. In solution, these two are present. So if you were to use, let's say, sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride, this reagent is capable of reducing both of these compounds. It can reduce the ketone into isopropyl alcohol, and it can reduce the imine into the amine. So you will get this product, but it might not be the best yield. You'll get a mixture of products. Now the advantage of sodium cyanoborohydride is that it's a weaker reducing agent than NaBH4. It's not strong enough to reduce the ketone, but it's strong enough to reduce the imine, which is more reactive or more electrophilic than the ketone. Now, if you're going to use sodium borohydride, you need to isolate this compound from the solution. If you can do that, then you can get this product in good yield. Now let's go over the mechanism of this reaction. So let's start with acetone again. Now we're going to add ammonia to the solution under mildly acidic conditions. So around a pH of 4 and 5, we're definitely going to have the ammonium ion also in solution. So keep that in mind. So ammonia is going to attack the carbonyl carbon causing the pi bonds to break. So this oxygen will have a negative charge and it's going to have a nitrogen attached to it with three hydrogen atoms. Now in order to get the imine we need to get rid of the oxygen and right now it's a terrible leaving group. So we need to transfer two protons to it in order to make it a good leaving group. Whenever oxygen has a plus charge, it's a good leaving group. So how can we transfer the hydrogen onto this oxygen? The best way to do that is to use a solvent or a weak base in a solvent. Let's use ammonia. So ammonia in a solution, well actually we also have NH4+, let's use that first. The ammonium ion can transfer a hydrogen onto the oxygen. And so now we have a hydroxyl group. Now this nitrogen still has four bonds, so it has a plus charge. Now that NH4 lost the hydrogen, it's a weak base again in the form of NH3. So we can use that to remove a hydrogen from the nitrogen. Now what do you think is going to happen at this point? 
So in order to get rid of the hydroxyl group, which is still a bad leaving group, we need to add another hydrogen. So since ammonia is back in its acidic form after it acquired a hydrogen, we can use it to transfer the hydrogen onto the hydroxyl group. So this oxygen is going to take a hydrogen, causing these electrons to return back to the nitrogen. So we now have an oxygen with two hydrogen atoms attached to it. It has three bonds, one lone pair, and it has a plus charge, which it's now a good leaving group. So what we're going to do at this point is that we're going to use the nitrogen atom to expel the oxygen atom. So nitrogen is going, to t is going to take its lone pair, use it to form a double bond, kicking out H2O. By the way, all of these steps are reversible. If I didn't write the double arrow, it should be there. So now we have an aminium ion. So this nitrogen has a plus charge. And then ammonia can come in and take away a hydrogen, producing the imine. Now keep in mind, it's easier to reduce the aminium ion than the imine because of the plus charge. If you draw the resonance structure of the aminium ion, Notice that the carbon can bear a positive charge. So this carbon is electrophilic. And as a result, this is why the aminium ion is more reactive than a ketone. So when sodium borohydrate comes in, it's going to be very attracted to this carbocation, which is stabilized by resonance. So now let's add sodium borohydride, but let's use this form of the aminium ion. So sodium borohydride has a boron attached to it with three hydrogen atoms and a cyanide group. The cyanide group is basically an electron withdrawn group and its presence weakens the effect of the hydride ions. So this reagent is not as strong as a reducing agent like lithium aluminum hydride or even as uh, NABH4 sodium borohydride. So because of this electron withdrawn group, it's not able to reduce ketones or aldehydes. It can just reduce uh, the aminium ion. Now the hydrogen that's attached to boron has a partial negative charge. Hydrogen is more electronegative than boron. Boron has an electronegativity value of 2.0, and for hydrogen, it's 2.1. Because hydrogen has a partial negative charge, it's nucleophilic. Therefore, it's attracted to the carbon that has a partial positive charge. So we're going to have a nucleophilic addition reaction. The hydride is going to attack the carbon, breaking the pi bond, pushing those two electrons back to the nitrogen atom. So now we have this product. We have a nitrogen with two hydrogens and a lone pair, and we added a hydrogen atom to the carbon. So this is equivalent to our final product, which is an amine. So that's the mechanism for the reductive amination of ketones, and you can apply this to aldehydes as well. Now let's work on some practice problems. So let's say if we have cyclohexanone, and we're going to add, in the first step, methylamine, and in the second step, sodium cyanoborohydride. And go ahead and predict the major product as well as the intermediate of this reaction. So once we add methylamine, we're going to get the imine product, which will look like this. 
So we're going to replace the oxygen with a, a nitrogen. The nitrogen is going to lose these two hydrogens, but it will still be attached to the R group, that is the methyl group. So this is the amine product that we'll get in this reaction. Now, once we add sodium cyanoborohydride, the methyl group will remain, but this will convert into a, an amine. So we're going to add a hydrogen to the nitrogen. So the final product is going to look like this. It's going to be NH and then CH3. So we added a hydrogen to the nitrogen atom and also to the carbon atom. So this is the product. So here we have a secondary amine. If you want a secondary amine, you need to start with one R group. You need to add a primary amine to a ketone.